Today I go back 1500 years to the very beginning of pottery in the southwest. And then I go out and try to locate some of those original clays that the potters were using in ancient times. I came to the Arizona State Museum to talk to you about the history of pottery in the Southwest. Inside the museum there's a pot, a seed jar that's over 1500 years old that was found right here in the Tucson area. See, Tucson has a really rich and ancient pottery tradition. So my idea was that I could go around Tucson and try to hunt down some of those clays that those early potters were using to make pottery when pottery technology first came up out of Mexico into the Southwest. Let me give you a little history lesson first on pottery in the Southwest and how it relates to Tucson. Ceramic technology developed in central Mexico over 4,000 years ago and spread north into the American Southwest. Crude and underfired ceramic figurines and bowls were made here starting several hundred years BC. But the first real pottery that was fired hard and was relatively durable began to be made around the year 50 AD in the Tucson area. This early pottery was mostly seed jars that are rimless round pots that are used for storing seeds away from pests. Several early ceramic period sites have been excavated in the Tucson area. The stone pipe site in Tucson produced the oldest whole vessel in the Arizona State Museum. It was found on the floor of a burned house that dates to 450 AD. A storage room with a number of broken seed jars was found at the Mission Garden Locus of the Clearwater site here in Tucson. By 500 AD, ceramics had evolved into a variety of forms with the addition of red painted decorations. I know where there's a ruin here in town where there's some good usable clay nearby. Let's start a search there. Just across the wash from me here is the massive West Branch site. Studies have shown that a lot of the pottery that was being used in the Tucson Basin in say the 9 to 1100 time period was coming out of this site. So we know they must have had some really good clay sources in this area. In fact, personal note, my great grandparents homesteaded at the base of that mountain there on part of the West Branch site back in the 1920s. So let's see if we can find some clay out here. Here's an area where it looks like maybe people have been riding dirt bikes. A little trail here crosses West Branch and uh, where there's some erosion here we can get a, a little bit of a view of what's going on below ground. Here again we have that crackled texture, those hard nodules. That's worth trying out right there. That's, uh, that's definitely clay. See how hard that's packed in there? See those angular chunks? We'll take some of that back and try it out. So I've found some decent clay near the Santa Cruz River here. The problem is that this ruin isn't nearly old enough. It's this whole calm period, so it maybe goes back to like 600 or 500 AD, but I'm looking to go back to like 2 or 300 AD, so several hundred years earlier than this. So I'm going to go up the river farther to a place near Prince Road, which is near where they found that really old jar at the Arizona State Museum. Well, this is a disappointment. The banks of the Santa Cruz River up here by Prince Road are completely encased in concrete. Even the bed of the river has been scraped level by heavy equipment. So I'm going to head down to Mission Gardens. That's where that storage room full of early ceramic period seed jars was found. I'm going to see if I can find some clay down there. This area here at the base of A Mountain is sometimes called Tucson's birthplace because this is where the original Pima village named Tucson existed when the first Europeans arrived. This is also an area where some of the earliest pottery in the Tucson Basin was found. Like a lot of places in the Tucson area, this land has all been re-sculpted 
and leveled and turned up over the years. There was a landfill in here at one point in the early 20th century. And now, as you can see, there's construction going on again. So any areas even like this that are open now may be condominiums or industrial parks soon and off limits. So even though we can see a lot of open areas with dirt here, a lot of this isn't the original dirt that was here. It was filled in uh, right where that, that's the caterpillar uh, plant. Uh, and right there where it's sitting was a, a quarry at one time. So there was a huge hole in the ground there just a few years ago. It's all been filled in. And of course the riverbanks over there towards downtown uh, are all covered in concrete like everywhere else. So there's not a lot original here. There's not a lot of that original clay that the natives were using available. Now let me show you what I am seeing. And that is along this dirt road in the bottom where the water is sat, you see that crackled texture there? That's what I'm looking at. Now, like I said, this may not even be here for very long. We come back next year and find a condominiums in this area or something. But. Okay, so we've got that crackled texture showing that it's expansive. It breaks into these hard chunks, these nodules, which is common for clay. It's not soft and dirt-like, it's hard, like clay. It's clay that's been packed in a roadbed. I'll take some of that home and see what I can do with it. That's honestly the best we can do out here right now because most of the original clay has been covered up or dug out. The time will come before too long that all the native clay in the Tucson area is covered up with concrete or asphalt or housing developments. Okay, back in the studio now with my clay I picked up over near the Tucson birthplace at the base of Sentinel Peak. Uh, here's some of that clay. And so basically in order to use it in my corn grinder it just has to be kind of marble sized bits. So a lot of this is crumbly enough that I can break it by hand uh, into large enough pieces to go through the, the mill. And I don't, I'm not going to grind up all of this at once. I just need enough. I just need enough to make a test tile. So, you know, a handful of clay. Okay, I got it all ground up. Uh, let's see how it does. Get it wet and see how the plasticity is. I've got enough clay here to make a decent little pinch pot if I want. a little bit of work. It wanted to be kind of crusty and it was a bit hydrophobic. That is to say that the water didn't soak in easily. It wanted to beat up on top of it, which some some soils are like that. Um, but it's quite plastic now and quite soft too. I like the feel of it. It may need some temper. I didn't add any temper to it. I'm just testing it out. But let's see how it is for plasticity. Roll a little coil out of it. Roll it around your finger. See that? That's pretty good. That's a good plasticity test right there. I've gone around my finger twice. It may be a couple of little superficial cracks, but for the most part, it's fairly plastic. So I'm gonna wrap this up in a plastic bag and give it some time to kind of set before I try making something out of it. Not long, uh, not you know, maybe an hour or so, a couple hours at the most. 
So once I formed this clay into a pot and fired it, will I really know if I have the same clay as those early ceramic period potters were using? No. It would take laboratory studies to know for sure that this was exactly the same clay that they were using. But we can say generally that that alluvial clay on the Santa Cruz River in Tucson is the earliest potter's clay in the American Southwest that we know of. Could there be older pottery someplace else in the Southwest that we don't know of yet? Absolutely. The reason there's been so much archeology span in the Tucson basin is because there's a city here. If you move a few miles to the east to the San Pedro Valley, where most of the floodplain along the river is old agricultural fields or is now protected by the Bureau of Land Management, and there's virtually no development along the river, there could be just as old a pottery or older pottery that we don't know about because there just hasn't been as much work in that area. But we can say the oldest we know of is here in the Tucson area. And that this alluvial clay from the Santa Cruz River is very similar to what they were using. Pretty darn close to what they were using. I think what I've learned here today is that Tucson has a rich and ancient ceramic tradition, but not only are we losing ruins to development, we're also losing access to that alluvial clay along the Santa Cruz River, which is the very foundation of that ceramic tradition here in Tucson. When the last of that Santa Cruz River alluvial clay is buried underneath a parking lot, it will be a real tragedy. If you're enjoying my videos and you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you know when the next video comes out. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.